begin the 18th lecture on Genesis. Today we will begin with Genesis chapter 38. The title of chapter 38 is Tamar. First, Judah marries and has three sons, verses 1 through 5. Second, Judah's daughter-in-law, Tamar, and her relationships with his three sons, verses 6 through 11. Third, Tamar becomes pregnant by Judah, verses 12 through 26. Fourth, Tamar has two sons by Judah, verses 27 through 30. Judah married and had three sons. Read verses 1 through 2. At that time, Judah left his brothers and went down to stay with a man of Adullam named Hira. There Judah met the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. He married her and lay with her. Judah married the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. Judah married a Canaanite woman. He married a foreign woman. This was wrong. Chapter 24, verse 3. Judah did not marry with faith. Adullam is located 25 kilometers southwest of Bethlehem. Verse 6. Judah got a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. Judah's eldest son was Ur. Ur married a woman named Tamar. Ur was wicked in the eyes of God, and so God put him to death. Ur died because he sinned before God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 29 through 30. Verse 8. Then Judah said to Onan, Lie with your brother's wife to produce offspring for your brother. Judah's eldest son died, and Judah said to his second son, Onan, Lie with your brother's wife, and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law. The law says that when an older brother dies, Without having had any children, his younger brother is to take his dead brother's wife as his own wife. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 5 through 6. Matthew chapter 22 verse 24. However, from verse 9, Onan knew that his offspring would not be his, and he spilled his semen on the ground when he lay with his brother's wife. Therefore God put Onan to death. Onan became jealous of his brother and tried to keep his brother's family from succeeding their father. Onan committed this wrongful sin and was put to death. Verse 11. Judah then said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Live as a widow in your father's house until my son Shelah grows up. Verse 
Judah told his daughter-in-law Tamar to go stay in her father's house. Judah told her to wait until his third son was old enough to get married. Judah was worried that his son Shelah would die too. Verse 12. After a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. When Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah. Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. Judah went up to Timnah with his friend Hira and Adulamite. At that time, Tamer disguised herself as a prostitute and sat along the road. Timnah is located 10 kilometers south of Jerusalem. It was Tamer's hometown. Joshua chapter 15 verse 57 Verses 15 through 16 when Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute. Not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law, he said, Come now, let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you? she asked. Judah thought Tamer was a prostitute. Judah slept with his daughter-in-law. Tamer. Then he gave her his seal and its cord and his staff as payment. Why did Tamer sleep with her father-in-law? This was not a result of sexual desires. There was a spiritual purpose to this. Tamer believed that God would send the coming Christ through Judah. Thus, she believed that Christ would be born through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Tamer wanted to partake in the promise of the coming Christ. She wanted to take part in the lineage of Christ. Hence, Tamer got her wish because Christ came through her son, Perez. Tamer got to take part in the lineage of Jesus. Of course, her method was wrong. Yet, it was commendable that she wanted to take part in Christ's lineage. Verse 24 About three months later, Judah was told, Your daughter-in-law, Tamer, is guilty of prostitution, and as a result, she is now pregnant. Judah said, Bring her out and have her burned to death. About three months later, Judah heard the news that Tamer was guilty of prostitution and was now pregnant. Judah thought that she was guilty of committing adultery and said that she be burned to death. The laws of the Old Testament said that anyone who commits adultery was to be stoned to death or burned in the fire. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 23 through 24. At the time, the man of the household held the right to life and death. Chapter 31, verse 32. Chapter 42, verse 37.
verse 25. As she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns these, she said. And she added, See if you recognize whose seal and cord and staff these are. As she was being brought out, Tamer showed the people her father-in-law's seal, cord, and staff. Judah then realized his mistake and repented. He repented of having committed adultery with his daughter-in-law. He regretted not having given his third son to his daughter-in-law, even though his son had grown up. Verses 27 through 30 When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand. This one came out first. But when he drew back his hand, his brother came out, and she said, So this is how you have broken out. And he was named Perez. Then his brother, who had the scarlet thread on his wrist, came out, and he was given the name Zara. Tamer gave birth to two sons. Perez and Zara. Perez means break. Perez became a forefather of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1 verse 3. Tamer was recorded in the genealogy of Jesus Christ for the following reasons. First, no matter how great an unethical sin one may commit, he can be saved if he believes in Jesus Christ. No matter how great a sin one may commit, he can be saved if he believes in Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 9 verses 12 through 13. Second, no one can boast of being a physical forefather of Jesus Christ. Man is saved through faith alone. Man cannot be saved by his actions. We will continue the lecture with chapter 39. The title of chapter 39 is Overcoming Sin. First, Joseph the Slave, verses 1 through 6. Second, Joseph Overcomes Temptations, verses 7 through 12. Third, Potiphar's Wife Accuses Joseph, verses 13 through 18. Fourth, Joseph's life in prison, verses 19 through 23. Here in the passages, Joseph lives by faith in Potiphar's house. Read verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Ishmaelites took Joseph to Egypt. They sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, as a slave. This was a part of God's plans and providence. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 Matthew chapter 10 verse 29 
Joseph believed that he ended up in Egypt by God's guidance. Chapter 45, verses 5 through 8. Joseph had faith that believed in the sovereignty of God. Joseph was not resentful. He did not lament over his circumstances. He did not despair. He overcame his difficulties with faith. Verse 2 The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. God was with Joseph, and Joseph prospered. Joseph had faith that always walked with God. Joseph walked with God, and hence God led Joseph to prosper. Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Faith that walks with God does not leave God, but relies on God. Second, faith that walks with God receives God's guidance and instruction. Third, faith that walks with God obeys the word of God. Verse 3, When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Potiphar knew that God was with Joseph. How did Joseph's master know? He saw that Joseph served God wholeheartedly. Joseph was always joyful and thankful in all circumstances even in the midst of his hardships. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 10. God's amazing power was seen through Joseph. Joseph was faithful and was kind in character. Verses 4 through 5. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household. The Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Joseph was faithful before God and before other people. Therefore, God blessed Joseph and his master's household. Then his master put Joseph in charge of his household and all that he owned. We believers must also be faithful when we work. We must receive acknowledgement by our masters and we must be faithful. We must make God our master when we work, and we must work with faithfulness. Verses 7 through 8 And after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me, but he refused. Potiphar's wife seduced Joseph. However, Joseph overcame her temptation. First, Joseph used the conscience of his faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. Second, Joseph kept his limits. Joseph did not cross the line between a master and a slave, and he said, My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. 
third, Joseph was afraid to commit sins. Joseph said, "How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God?" Joseph had a thorough understanding about sin. Joseph knew that adultery was a great sin. Fourth, Joseph had faith that lived for God. Joseph said, "How then could I sin against God? Even if no one would see him, he knew that God would see him." Joseph feared God. Therefore, he was able to overcome the temptation of committing adultery. One must avoid such times and places. First Corinthians chapter six verse eighteen. Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty-two. Romans chapter seven verse eleven. In this way. Joseph defeated sin and gained victory. Verses eleven through twelve. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties. She caught him by his cloak and said, "Come to bed with me." But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Potiphar's wife told Joseph to come to bed with her. However, Joseph left his cloak and ran away. Joseph thought it is more important not to sin before God, even if misunderstandings arose. He ran away to keep his purity. He left his worries to God. Then, from verse thirteen, Potiphar's wife lies and accuses Joseph. Then Joseph is eventually thrown into prison. Verse nineteen. When his master heard the story. His wife told him, saying, "This is how your slave treated me." He burned with anger. Joseph's master burned with anger. His master did not call Joseph to find out the truth. His master did not look into what really happened, but threw Joseph into prison. Joseph did not make excuses. Then he was put in prison. Joseph left things to God, who judges justly. Joseph's situation was unfair from the point of view of man. However, Joseph believed. That God had allowed such things to happen. Thus, Joseph endured until the end. Joseph did not resent people. Joseph did not hate people. He believed in God's sovereignty and endured. He left everything in the hands of God. Verse twenty one, the Lord was with him; he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Next, Joseph was a faithful person even in prison. God was with Joseph. Joseph was made responsible. For all that was done in prison, verse twenty-three, the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care.
because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Joseph walked with God, and thus Joseph did well as a slave in Potiphar's house, and Joseph found success even in prison. Joseph walked with God. Joseph believed in God's sovereignty and providence. Joseph believed that God worked for the good of those who love him and gave his grace and blessings. Joseph was faithful. Joseph found success in whatever he did. We will continue with chapter 40. The title of chapter 40 is Life in Prison. First, Pharaoh's two officials are put in prison, verses 1 through 4. Second, Joseph interprets the dreams of the two officials, verses 5 through 19. Third, Joseph's interpretations come true. Verses 20 through 23. While Joseph was in prison, two officials were put into the same prison where Joseph was. Read verses 1 through 2. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials. There was a chief cupbearer and a chief baker. The two men offended Pharaoh and were put in prison. Verse 4 the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. Verse 5. Each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Verses 6 through 7. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked, Why are your faces so sad today? Joseph went to them the next morning and saw that the two officials were dejected. Joseph cared for and was concerned for others in such ways. Joseph noticed that their faces were filled with sadness. In this way, Joseph did his best in the work given him, was faithful, and was kind and concerned for others. Verse 8. We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. They said that there was no one who could interpret their dreams. Then Joseph said to them, Interpretations belong to God. God is able to solve all problems. In verses 9 through 13, Joseph interprets the chief cupbearer's dream. The chief cupbearer was put in prison because of misunderstandings. Thus, Joseph interpreted that he would be restored of his position three days later. 
God gave Joseph divine wisdom. God gave Joseph wisdom to interpret dreams. God also gave Daniel such wisdom. Daniel chapter one verse seventeen. Verse fourteen. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. Joseph asked him to help him get out of prison. Joseph told the cupbearer that he did not do anything to be put into prison. Next, from verse sixteen, the chief baker tells Joseph his dream. Joseph interpreted the chief baker's dream as well. Joseph interpreted that the chief baker would be hung to death in three days. Verse twenty. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. It was Pharaoh's birthday three days later. The chief cupbearer and the chief baker were called before the king. The chief cupbearer was restored to his position, and the chief baker was hanged to death. It happened just as Joseph interpreted. Verse twenty-three. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. However, the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph's grace. He forgot about Joseph's goodness. He betrayed Joseph's grace. Joseph waited, but never received good news. However, this was all God's grace. How would things have been if Joseph was released from prison because the cupbearer remembered Joseph? If Joseph was set free, he would have run home to his father's house. Then he would not have become the prime minister of Egypt two years later. Therefore, God kept Joseph in prison for two years. It was God's grace that the chief cupbearer forgot about Joseph. To Joseph, his time in prison was a time of preparation with faith. We will continue the lecture with chapter forty-one. The title of Chapter Forty One is Pharaoh's Dreams. First, Pharaoh has dreams, and no one can interpret it. Verses one through eight. Second, Pharaoh calls Joseph to interpret his dreams. Verses nine through thirty-two. Third, Joseph tells Pharaoh. Of seven years of famine, verses thirty-three through thirty-six. Fourth, Pharaoh makes Joseph prime minister of Egypt, verses thirty-seven through forty-five. Fifth, seven years of food collected, and Joseph has two sons, verses forty-six through fifty-two. Six, food is given out during the seven years of famine, verses fifty-three through fifty-seven.
Read verse one. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. Pharaoh had a dream. There were seven sleek and fat cows in his dream. There were seven ugly and gaunt cows behind the fat cows. Later, the ugly and gaunt cows ate the seven fat cows. Then Pharaoh had another dream. There were seven healthy heads of grain. Then seven thin and scorched heads of grain sprouted. The seven thin heads of grain ate up the seven healthy heads of grain. These were not ordinary dreams, but were God's special revelation. Thus, Pharaoh was unable to interpret the dreams. The magicians and wise men of Egypt were unable to interpret the dreams. The Holy Spirit alone was able to interpret the dreams. First Corinthians chapter two verses thirteen through fourteen. Verse nine. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, "Today I am reminded of my shortcomings." The chief cupbearer was filled with regret. He remembered after two years and regretted it. He told Pharaoh that Joseph had interpreted his dream. Two years ago, verse fourteen. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. Now Joseph was needed. Pharaoh called Joseph out of prison. When God's time comes, prison doors open and success. Follows. If we endure through our hardships and walk with God, there will be a day when God will lift us up. Therefore, we must continue to grow in faith. Then God will use us in His timing. Psalm chapter one o five verses seventeen through twenty. Verses fifteen through sixteen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, "I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it." I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Joseph did not tell Pharaoh that he could interpret dreams. Joseph said, "God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires." Joseph was humble. Joseph only lifted up and glorified God. From verse seventeen, Joseph interprets. That the seven fat cows and the seven healthy heads of grain were seven years of great abundance. The seven ugly and gaunt cows and the seven thin heads of grain were seven years of famine. Later, there would be seven years of abundance, and then seven years of famine. The famine would be so great that the abundance in Egypt would be forgotten. Verse thirty-three.
And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man, and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Joseph advised Pharaoh on how to prepare for the upcoming famine. What was Joseph's advice? He told Pharaoh to appoint a discerning and wise man. Then he said to put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Then Joseph said to store a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. Then later, during the famine, they could supply the people with the stored food. This was also a prophecy about the last days. It means that we must prepare for the last days. When God gives us grace, we must prepare for the final days. We must receive grace when God gives us grace. Second Corinthians chapter six verse two. We must grow spiritually in times of peace and grace. Just as grain was prepared during the seven years of abundance. We must also prepare our spiritual food today. We must prepare for sufferings. The five wise virgins prepared lamps and oil. When we grow in faith, we can gain victory in the midst of great sufferings. Verses thirty-seven through thirty-eight. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. Pharaoh heard about Joseph's interpretations of the dreams, and also the plans Joseph suggested. Pharaoh saw that Joseph was intelligent and wise. Then Pharaoh made Joseph prime minister of Egypt, and Joseph was put in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh knew that Joseph was a man with the spirit of God. Verse forty-two. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger. And put it on Joseph's finger. Pharaoh took his signet ring and gave it to Joseph. This was a stamp used to permit decisions made by the king. Esther chapter three verse ten. Esther chapter eight verse two. Joseph. Was dressed in robes of fine linen, and was given a gold chain to put around his neck. Verse forty-six. Joseph was thirty years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old when he became prime minister. Then, in verse forty-five, Joseph gets married. He married Asenath, daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. Asenath was once a woman who served idols. However, she believed in and served God after she married Joseph. Verses thirty-eight through thirty-nine. Verse forty-seven. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph 
stored grain in Egypt during the seven years of abundance. The amount of grain that was stored was beyond measure. Verse 51. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. Joseph had two sons. The older son was named Manasseh. Manasseh means forget. This meant that Joseph forgot all the troubles of the past and all his father's household. God made Joseph forget about his past troubles. God binds up our wounds and comforts us. It is God's grace that we forget about our hardships. Verse 52 The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God had made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Joseph's second son was named Ephraim. Ephraim means twice fruitful. Joseph believed that God would make him fruitful in the future by his grace. Thus, Joseph praised God for making him fruitful. God will make us fruitful when we keep our faith during difficult times. Verses 53 through 54. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt there was food. The seven years of abundance came to an end, and the seven years of famine began according to God's revelation. The stored grain was passed out to the people during the famine. They were able to get through the seven years famine. Those who prepare in advance can overcome famine. Verse 57 And all the countries came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. The famine was severe in other regions besides Egypt. Many people came to Egypt after hearing that there was grain in Egypt. Joseph saved not only the lives of those in Egypt, but the lives of those in other regions as well. We must have faith to save both ourselves and others with what God has given us. We must prepare spiritual food. Then we will overcome whatever hardships approach us. We must prepare the food of our faith during the times of comfort and when God gives us grace so that we can overcome hardships. We will conclude the lecture on chapter 41. Here we will conclude the 18th lecture on Genesis. Thank you.